In the past few years, gaming laptops have already become so powerful that they are literally competing with high-end gaming desktops. And as you might already know, Nvidia was planning to launch their RTX 40 series GPUs for gaming laptops. Just yesterday, they launched their new gaming laptops featuring the RTX 4080 and 4090 laptop GPUs starting at a price of $2000. These laptops will be super powerful in gaming and also in productivity as we will see through the latest benchmarks of Intel's flagship Raptor Lake CPUs. However, it looks like Nvidia is taking care of laptops more than their desktop graphics cards and has planned to launch its mid-range options such as the RTX 4070, 4060 and 4050. In the same launch article, Nvidia boasts about the performance of these three GPUs and compares them with the desktop version of the RTX 3080. While it is reasonable to assume that the 4070 laptop GPU can bring an RTX 3080's performance, Nvidia's inclusion of the other two smaller GPUs makes the whole statement misleading. The statement does not simply say that the GeForce RTX 4070 will bring the RTX 3080 performance, but also includes the 4060 and 4050 GPUs, making it look like these two GPUs are also somewhat close to 3080's performance. They even did the same with the image by putting all three laptop GPUs in the specs and telling people that they are going to get 3080's performance at one third of the power consumption. Yes, it is true that these three GPUs bring a maximum TDP of 115 watts, which is almost three times lower than the TDP of the desktop RTX 3080, but in no way the laptop 4060 and 4050 can let you play at 1440p ultra settings with 80 FPS. These laptops will start at a price tag of $1,000, where I think the 4050 laptops are going to sell for a price of $1,000 to $1,500 and the 4060 laptops may sell up to $2,000. The 4070 laptop should easily cost $2,000 or more, therefore 1440p ultra settings gaming will not be possible on a $1,000 gaming laptop. Now, these are not the only GPUs Nvidia is planning to launch, but some leaks suggest that Nvidia has also prepared Ada Lovelace workstation GPUs. As reported by video cards, the information about these GPUs comes from the maintainers of the PCI ID database, and therefore the admin of Laptop Video to Go posted four new PCI device IDs on the forum that clearly mentions Ada Generation Laptop GPU. These four GPUs will be named differently from the standard gaming GPUs and the flagship one will be the RTX 5000 model, which is supposedly going to feature 16GB of GDDR6 VRAM on a 256-bit memory bus. The other three GPUs will feature lower VRAM sizes on a smaller bus width. These GPUs are going to feature AD103 to AD107 chips, where the AD103 on the RTX 5000 GPU will be most likely an RTX 4090 laptop equivalent for workstation computers. Apparently, the RTX 3500 is likely to be a cut-down version of the AD104 GPU, but it should still come with a decent memory of 16GB on a 192-bit bus. There is currently no information about when Nvidia is planning to launch these GPUs, but it is expected that Nvidia would show the new Ada-based laptops at the graphics technology conference that is planned for 20th March. One more interesting piece of news is also in the talks, and it is about the Intel Rocket Lake CPUs. According to Intel's new documentation, it is discontinuing the 11th gen Rocket Lake CPUs, which were the last to use the 14 nanometer process node. The document shows that the product discontinuance program support began on 6th Feb this year and the last product discontinuance shipment will be on 23rd of Feb 2024. This means that even though the official discontinuance of Rocket Lake CPUs has already started, there is one more year till people can easily find these CPUs in retail stores. I remember that 11th gen CPUs did not bring much improvement over the 10th gen series and were not that popular at the time of release. Still, to this date, it is somehow cheaper to build a PC with the LGA1200 platform as a lot of decent Z590 motherboards cost below $150, which reduces the cost of total PC builds significantly. As 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs won't be able to fit on an LJ1200 socket, it is recommended that you upgrade to a higher end 11th gen CPU if you already own a budget CPU from this series. This will make your PC last some more years without remaining too far from the standards today. Lastly, if you remember one of my previous videos, I showed you the performance numbers of one of the upcoming Dragon Range CPUs, which is the Ryzen 9 7845HX. It crushed every other mobile CPU we have known to date in the past mark test. Unfortunately, the win for this CPU was for a few days only, and now two new Intel CPUs have surpassed the 7845HX. 
The first one is the i9-3980HX which is the flagship Raptor Lake Mobile CPU with 52,606 points. And the other is i9-13900HX with 51,739 points. Compared to the score generated by 7845HX, the i9-13900HX is 10% and the 3980HX is 16% faster. It was expected because both CPUs bring two times more cores than the 7845HX. However, it is still surprising and amazing to see that despite being far away in specs, the 7845HX is not that behind. Moreover, the 7845HX has a max TDP of only 75 watts, whereas both Intel CPUs are almost two times more power hungrier than the former. It is also possible that this record of Intel CPUs will break any day because AMD is going to ship Ryzen 7000 based laptops this month that will feature the flagship CPU, the 7945HX, which is a 16 core 32 threads monster CPU with the same TDP configuration as of 7845HX. Let me know what you guys think about this mobile CPU battle. Do you think the 7945HX will be able to dethrone Intel's 13980HX or will Intel CPUs maintain their high positions like the previous gen mobile CPUs? Subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you in the next video.